In this video, we're going to talk about percent dissociation of acids. Um, and we're first just going to look at our um, just a generic Bronsted acid, so some something that has a proton that when we put in water will dissociate to its conjugate base and form H3O plus. And so in the pictures here, we have an example of both a weak and a strong acid. So this one here is an example of our weak acid and this being example of a strong acid. We say that strong acids dissociate completely because we can see here that none of the protons are associated with the acid anymore. And so we just have conjugate brace and all of the protons have been liberated. Whereas this figure on the left shows a weak acid, where we actually see most of the protons are still associated with the acid and only, um, only some of the protons become liberated. And so for weak acids, we wanna be able to calculate their percent dissociation. And the percent dissociation um, is dependent on the concentration of the solution. So we've been looking at equilibrium values to give us a sense of the strength of the acid, but we need to know the concentration to know the percent dissociation. Um, and so on the bottom here, we have the definition of the percent dissociation, which is 100 times the change in the concentration of HA over the initial concentration. And what this is basically just telling me is that it's the concentration of deprotonated over the total concentration. And so again, if we just remember our ice table here, we have some initial concentration of the protonated acid that we start with we allow it to go to equilibrium. And so we're gonna have some deprotonated, um, uh, some deprotonated form starting. And then we basically have this, um, our equivalent concentration of HA um, at equilibrium. And so if we have the concentration, then we can calculate the percent dissociation. Um, likewise, if we know the percent dissociation, we should also be able to back calculate um, the concentration. So let's do a real example here and calculate the percent dissociation of a 0.1 molar solution of formic acid. So I'm going to set up my ice table again here. And so now if I have um, 0.10 molar, I'm starting with and then allow my solution to equilibrate. So I will deprotonate and form some of the formate ion. And then my equilibrium concentration of formic acid will then have some um, protons lost. Um, and then I form um, the formate and the H3O plus. And now I can insert these values into my Ka equation where my only variable is x and then I'm able to solve for x. So when I plug these values into my equilibrium expression you will get a quadratic formula which when you solve you should get 4.2 times 10 to the negative third molar. And so what that's telling me then if I want to look at my percent dissociation is I know the deprotonated form is in the concentration of 4.2 times 10 to the third molar. I started with 0.01 molar. And so this gives me a percent dissociation of 4.2%. So if I have a 0.10 molar solution of formic acid, it will be 4.2% um, um, deprotonated. You will also hear us talking about a percent association. Um, and when we're looking at a percent association, there we're actually just looking at if we have the base that we're putting in water. And so when you put the base in water, you're then actually calculating the amount that's protonated over what you started with. Um, and so that's why we can also write percent associations. So in summary, the percent dissociation gives us an idea of how much of our weak acid is dissociated and it is concentration dependent. 